Okay, hello guys, welcome back. Today is our final session out of our 10 days session. Today is only practice and review. I mentioned this earlier in one of the sessions. We are not going to introduce you to new new topic today. If you have any questions on any of the topics last nine sessions, you can ask today and that would be all our discussions that we will do. Especially we will review functions today based on one of the requests I got earlier from one of you guys. Then we have uh, about 20 quiz questions to just to recap the things that we covered. I will also show some of the assignment solutions but not all of them. Then we will wrap up with what is next like where you can go from uh, from this course after this certification and issue you your certificates before we leave okay so quickly review of, of functions um, I mentioned in in the functions session during the session that functions have a lot of advantages main advantages of using functions were modularity composability ease of debugging and testing proof of correctness and opaque internal working all right so the part that I want to focus here is the opaque internal working what I mean by that is there will be um, each function works like a, a, a black box. You do not need to know what is implemented or how it is implemented inside that function. All you need to know is how many inputs it will take and what output it will give. Okay, so every function will take zero or more inputs as uh, parameters or arguments that are fit into when we call the functions. And then the function does something and gives you the output as return. The return statements within that function dictate what will be the output of each function okay and let's see some examples the first example i want to show you is i want to start with something simple okay so here i have a simple code y equals to 10 and i'm printing y to the power 2 so i'm squaring the value of y this doesn't use function so there's nothing new here I'm declaring a variable and using that variable in a print statement or evaluation made inside print and it gives me the square of that number. Okay, so how do I convert this into a function? So that that's the interesting part. And let's see, let's pay attention to how I use the same code and change it into a functional piece. Okay, in a new cell, uh, so I will define a new function so this function does what it squares it squares a given number right so my function name will be square maybe and now it should take a number which I need to square so there will be one input right so let's say that input is the same variable y it can be any variable so just not to let not to confuse you let's say this variable is any named u okay and close bracket and then the same the colon at the end and inside there I will return uh, that u to the power 2 okay and how do I use this I will run this and once I run that I have this square function that I can reuse every time okay so square of 1 let's say I want to put that in print statement just to be sure square of 1 is 1 square of 10 is 100 square of minus 3 is 9 so you see I, I change something simple to a functional piece and then reuse the same function again and again in my code let's look at another one so in this example I want um, to find even and odd okay so here's my code simple code that finds even and odd without function so far uh, when I do 50 it gives me even when I do 5 it gives me odd so how do I change this piece into a functional part? Uh, let me copy this. Now again, I have one input here as well, just like in the previous one, and then one output, right? It, the output should say odd or even. So I will define with the def keyword, and now my function name is even odd. Again, it will have one input. So let's just say that input is x, bracket close, colon, and then in my functional body of the function, I paste that code here. Okay, I have to take care of indentation and that will remove the errors that may be there. Now I need a return statement. So in my return statement, I will return the output. Okay, now that is all the function body is. After that, I could use that function body again and again with new input values. So again, I want to put that in print and print with x value of what? 
let's say 55 right so that will give me 55 is odd i can reuse that again and again with different inputs and it will give me different outputs based on the input so once this function is done and ready i don't need to i don't need to care about how this is implemented inside that is what is meant by that black box okay i keep i keep feeding new inputs and it keeps giving me different outputs based on what i feed that is how exactly the function works and the output how how are inputs and outputs in these functions the uh, whatever i feed in this inside the bracket is the inputs for that function and the return statement declares what is the output of that function okay so inputs are here outputs are given by the return statement and what happens in between once i implement that function and test it to work other people do not need to care what is inside there they just use the function and make their life easy is, does this make sense or do you want me to do one more example i can do one more example with two different inputs and um, see the output maybe that will help you even better so on the on the second last one um, x equals five on the uh, second last year no the, the, the which cell which that. cell number no no on, on the top one all right no 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 here yeah right there yes so x equal five if x uh, is divided by two and that's an odd number no not divided this is modulo operation it gives you the remainder after division it's, it's, whatever right you... right now yeah. basically divided right do we kind of say that way no division is a slash or black slash whatever it is okay so it, this is this is odd but else output is even and it what okay okay got it no, no, if you're confused, ask. This is the last chance you have. Like, after this, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not trying to be rude, but that's that's my reality, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you want me to explain, or you got it? Just, just, I was just trying to understand the, the else, why it is... is so, when you divide any number by two, there's only two outcome, right? The remainder is either zero or one. There's no, no other output, there's just only two right, possibilities. Right. Yeah. So we only have if, if that's not true, then it will be else. Yeah. So if there is a remainder, it is odd number. If there is no remainder, it's an even number. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so same code, I paste it here with the indentation because I have this dev keyword defining a new function body, start of the function body, right? And then a function, this function returns the output. So there's only one input determined by this, one output determined by this. Once I have this function and I test it to work with a few examples, I can now share this with anybody and they don't have to care about what is inside or how, how I implemented it inside. There could be 100, 100 lines of uh, code here, but the ultimate outcome should match, right? It has to do what it is supposed to do. As long as that is true, a lot of people will not care how efficient your code is. Well, there is, there are, there are people in the world that cares about efficiency, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is usefulness or the advantages of using functions. Those were modularity, composability, ease of debugging and testing, proof of correctness, and the opaque internal working that we just talked about. We don't, we only see the black box once the function is ready. We don't see what is implemented, how it is implemented inside. We only care about the inputs that we feed in and the outputs we get out from that function. Make sense? So let me quickly do one more example. Um, let's say I wanna, uh, let's say there is a variable a equals to 10 and then b equals to nine. I want to sum those together and print out the statement, okay? So total equals to a plus B, something similar, some simple, right? And I would print uh, f a string and say sum of a and b is total. Okay, so I fit in here a, b, and total.
Okay, so let's see. Does that work? Yeah, it should work, right? 10 and 9 is 19. If I change the number, 30 and let's say 19. It should give me 49, which it does. So this is my simple code, procedural approach. If I want to change this to a functional approach, um, I would still use the same code, right? I'm pasting the same code here, but I want to indent them because right here I want to start with a function definition on line one. So define my function name would be total and it would take def total it will take a and b two parameters and it will go to next line. So once I have a and b input, I could use them here in a new statement. So I create a new variable total equals to a plus b and then now in, in case of function, I need a return statement. So in, instead of print, I would say return this f string, right? So that's all my function needs. And once I have that, all I need is this part. Run this so that it's on the memory or the interpreter. Now I can reuse that again and again, multiple times with different values, right? And then test some of the values, 10 plus nine, let's say one plus one, minus three and three, and then zero comma nine or any number okay so when i test this each time it will get it only gives me the last output so i would have to wrap that in print statement let's run it again so now every time I'm calling this function, all these are ran and the output is given back. That output is printed out with this print statement. So that's the beauty of function. I can create something simple or complex. All I need to worry about after creation, all I need to worry about is what input I need to feed in and what output I will get. So the function definition does the rest of the work. Any questions? So let's do some quizzes. These are some simple quiz that we went over in over the last nine sessions. Python is an example of what kind of language? I want you guys to, everybody to unmute yourself and then uh, we can quickly go over this. It's not gonna take too long. Programming. Sorry, which one? High level programming language. Okay. Um, second question, does Python use a compiler or an interpreter? Interpreter. Okay. What is a source code? Is it another name of a source file or machine code executed by the computer or a programming program written in a high level programming language? Uh, bullet number one. Is that right? Program written. Sorry, somebody said an anything new? Program return. Okay, that's the, that is the right answer. A source code is also a program that you write, um, like whatever Python code you write is your source code. Okay, what do you call a computer program which directly executes instruction return in a programming language? Is it a compiler, translator, or an interpreter? Interpreter. Okay. What Python version was covered in this course? Three. Three. Yeah. Which one of the following is an example of Python file extension? When you create a Python file, what what, type, what kind of extension would be the file's name have? Dot, dot .py. .py? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A complete set of known commands is called what? Low level list, instruction list, or mission list? Instruction list. Yes. 
the double black backslash operator what does it do is it division or it does not exist or perform regular division it doesn't exist anybody with different idea the only thing could be to me performs integer division or oh, not i don't think so i wouldn't i wouldn't know. Asriya, I, would, I, would, I would go, it doesn't exist too. Okay, Asriya, um, Kulvinder, Mike, you guys have any idea? Any input? What's your answer on this? I, uh, it's a, a regular division, performs a regular division. That's what I think. Okay. Does that exist? Yeah, I think so too. All right. All of you guys are wrong. It's a, it, it, oh, it's me? In, it is integer division. What that means is Okay, when you only have one of these sign, A divided by B, that's like regular division, right? But when you do double slash, that is a floor division or integer division. What that does is, it only gives you the integer value after the division is done. So 9 divided by 3 would be 0, but 10 divided by 3 would give you 3, not 3.333. If you do regular division with just one slash, it will give you 3.33. If you do double integer or double slash, that is floor division or integer division. It only gives you integer value. A keyword is a word. What kind of keyword? What is a keyword? Like keyword is a word that... Which of these statements are... Sorry? That the most important word in the whole program. Keyword is the most important word in the whole program. Okay. Do you, uh, anybody disagree with that? Cannot be used as a variable variable name. Okay, but it can be used as function. Cannot be used as a function as well. So first and second are correct. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's the correct answer. And keyword is not the most important word in the whole program. There is no such most important word thing in the, in the program. The interpreter needs every, every bit that you type in to execute correctly, okay? So everything is important. But keyword basically are resolved words that you cannot use to name a new variable or a function. Like for example, you cannot you cannot say your new variable uh, will you cannot name it as a return or print. Those are all resolved already. The value return in the input function is what kind? What type of that? What data type would be returned by input function? Input. Uh, okay. All of them, actually. The return output from once you in, once you feed your data in the input function, what kind of data type would it give you back? String. It's a string. Yes, it is always a string. Okay, so if you feed a number, you have to change it, typecast it back to integer or float or whatever data type you want it to be. So keep that in mind. The most important difference between the integer and a float is I don't understand what the sentences say. Integers cannot be literals. Literal meaning any value, okay? Any data that you give is literal. Integer cannot be literal, while floats can. Is that true? What does integer scanner be literal meaning? Literal means any literally any data that you store in the, in the memory. Well, integers are not float, but that no, I I know that much. Yes, integers are not float. That's what the question is. What is the most important difference between those integer and float? Which one of these do you think is correct? Okay, so the, the number one. 
number one? Yeah, that's what I Okay, say. so the correct answer is they are stored differently in the computer memory. Integers are stored differently and floats are stored differently. Why do you think there that is the case? What is your question again? Why are like the correct answer to this question is they are stored differently in computers. Integers are stored differently than how floats are stored. But now I am asking why that is the case. What is your question? What, what are you asking? They are what? stored differently, right? Yes, they are stored differently. That is the answer to this question on the screen. But now what I'm asking is why do you think integers and floats are stored differently? Because of the dot and the and the place name. The yes, those that decimal value cannot exactly be represented in binary. Right. So remember, right. in session one, I told you everything has to be stored as binary digits, ones and zeros. Yeah. So every integer has exact binary value, but every float cannot be represented exactly as binary values. That's right. why they have to be stored differently. Okay, so quiz number 12, conditional statement and loops. The operator used to check whether two values are not equal is coded as what? The first name. The first one. First one. Good. How many types of loops are there in Python? If, else, and why? Loops. Those two, two We're talking about loops. Three. Three, three, two. Okay. What else? There's if only, else, okay, there's why? only two types of loops, for loop and yeah. while loop. If and if else are conditional statements, not loops. For and while, yes. For loop and while loop. Those are the only two types that are that exist in Python. There are other like do while loop in other programming languages like C and Java that does not exist in Python. Which of the following statements are true? A break can be used anywhere. A break will cause execution of a function to terminate. The break will only terminate the innermost loop. The third one. Anybody confused on this? Why is the second one wrong? Not, not the correct answer. Because it depends if, if this is not in intend uh, in indent and not indented, then that could be true. But you know, in the in the loop, you could have you you there uh, loop after loop, so it could be no no no. Answer number two doesn't deal with loop. It talks about function. So break doesn't do anything with function. It only breaks out of a loop. So, oh, okay. So that's what okay. I'm trying to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Break is to terminate loops and return is to terminate functions. Those are two separate things, okay? Oh, okay. The function definition starts with a how, keyword. How about pass? What is that thing, pass? Pass me where? In this screen, I mean, I mean, would, is that applicable to function or is that applicable? You could to... use you could use pass anywhere, without uh, issues. Um, sometimes people use it to just leave it like as it is and come oh, back, yeah, yeah, come yeah, back yeah, and yeah, implement yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it doesn't execute, right? It executes but does nothing. It just goes to the next line. Okay. A function definition starts with what keyword? Death. Death. Yes. A function definition cannot be placed among other code, must be placed before the first invocation, or must be placed anywhere inside the code after the first invocation. What's the invocation? When you call the function, that is called invocation. Oh, okay. Like you create a function, but then you have to use that function, right? So that use or call that calling of that function is the invocation. If you see my example here, I created this function, but I, these are all invocation or call to that function. Make sense?
Okay, so what's the question? What's the answer here? The the second one, middle one. Yes. It cannot be placed anywhere inside the code after the first invocation. It has to be before the first invocation. So you have to define the function first and then use it. You cannot use it before defining it. Which of the following statements are true? Third? Yeah, the third one. The return keyword may cause the function to return a value, but this, let's look at the second one. The return keyword forces the function's execution to determine it. Okay, second or third. There could be multiple answers to this. Yeah. Yeah, it could be the second one, it seems correct, and the third one too. Yes, and that's the right answer. Yeah. We just talked about the second point earlier, right? When we talked about break statement. Yeah. Break is used to terminate loops and return is to terminate functions. Okay. But if there's no return, there is a default non-value that is returned. Uh, we can explicitly say return something to return a certain value that we want. Yeah. So it's second and third. A class definition starts with what keyword? Class. First? Uh, what class? Uh, the first one. Yes. That is a reserved keyword as well. What are the fundamental concepts in OOP, Object Oriented Programming? There are four fundamental concepts or four pillars that OOP is based on. Right? Do you guys remember any of those? Polymorphism, abstraction, inheritance, uh, and um, yeah, one more right, uh, encapsulation. Yes, awesome. One more. So we talked about this on the last session: encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance. If you want, if you want to review those, um, you can go back to the the video I posted on YouTube and was was that so i highly recommend if you do not understand these concepts i would highly recommend to watch that video because everything that you go everything that you learn beyond from here would need a lot of functions and classes use of those functions and classes from from now on okay so whatever we have done is like basic concepts like fundamental things core things in python but every Thing that are built on these con concepts will in it will most likely use some kind of functions or classes. So you have to understand how, what are these four pillars on which OOP is based on. So I would highly recommend, even if you understand, go back and maybe review that for clarity. So do we have access to Colab and all those materials after the class? Yes. After today? Yes, the videos are always on YouTube. Those are public things. I am making my Colab notebooks um, also public. So you can come back and access those anytime you want. The homework, right? A lot of yes. And you, I already sent shared PDF of uh, the slides that I went to, went over after every class. I shared those PDFs directly on discord so you can download that those pdfs and get the solutions from the for the assignments and project that i uh, gave you so is it. that in collab as well no those are the pdfs that i only sent on discord but where did you send it discord uh okay uh let me let me quickly finish i have one more question here and then i can show you where in discord okay okay so this is the last one. Can a class initialize an instance of another class as its member? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the example I gave in last session is a list 
list is a class and it, that class an object of type list can have another object of different data types i could store integer i could store float i could store another list inside a list so yes an instance of another class can be used within a class yeah and if you did the assignment there was one assignment in particular that would use this concept that would have to use this concept uh, i have a i think i have a solution for that problem as well in in one of the slides let me show you discord quickly under session planning i think if you scroll up there are well not there are colab notebooks here but under resources the youtube videos are here and the slides are here for every day okay except for the first day which i uh, which i recorded but the audio was not recorded properly so i will do that again and post it on youtube channel but all these resources the assignments are here this is the notes and resources channel inside discord okay. so the youtube videos are here the pdfs are uh, pdf uh, file for the slides that i went over in each session those are here everything is here and the collab are in general tab or under session tab session planning so let me quickly go over the a few of the problems or assignment that i give you not all of them um i will only do a few here so th this was our first question init the, the initializer or the constructor right constructor method the init method how would i define that so there are two inputs here in this method and how i would define that is simply by saying self that number equals to that number and then self dot street name equals to that street name so these are fed into the constructor method and i would create object variable with those inputs why 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 would you do this what is the what is the uh, point so i would once i create these i would use this not what the inputs were i stored that and use that stored object variable every time so i don't have so, to i don't have to use the inputs directly oh uh, okay i got that point so the function underscore in it and underscore what does that mean this is a dunder method a special magic method that is provided by python interpreter this is a constructor to create the object of this type okay so every time you say address you call this um you want to create an address type of this class you will say address and bracket right uh -huh. without any or two inputs to that so that initialize initial dunder method constructor will tell you how many inputs that class needs to initialize and the, it will automatically run this method once you try to create a new address class type okay so number 2 was object creation here you will see what i was talking about so i create a class called car there's a initializer constructor here i have three variables because i have three inputs fed in so all these are stored as object variable and then i have a new method here display information where i simply uh, display what were stored in these make make model and year variables okay now i can create two cars call those class definition two times to create car1 and car2 objects these are objects that is the call to that class this is the class definition right make sense and then once i have car car1 and car2 i can now access this method of that class so every object will have that method and i can call that to display those objects individual information okay i did not do other uh, there's one more sample solution that i provide to you and that is for the last question the defense system here 
uh, I'm not gonna go over that solution because it's lengthy one I want you to if you are interested I can this is uh, this will be in the slide that I provide you can go back and review how I did this okay there is multiple way how we can do this but this is just one of the ways so review this and see if you can grasp the knowledge from here okay what's next from here after, this is where towards the end of this course after 10 minutes I'm gone you guys are gone on your own path so what is next for you after this well this is just an introductory class so there are still more concepts that you could learn before getting into in depth into one of the areas that I will show you in next slide um, there are things to learn about string manipulation more in depth you could do more exercise uh, for detailed use cases of list, set, tuples, and dictionary data types, all these um, sequences that are built into Python. We did not do error handling, debugging, or testing in this course, so those are one of the big topics that you would need to master or know before you move on. There's something called regular expression for pattern matching. Uh, that would use RE module the, the module's name is just simply RE for regular expression and imagine like you you have a big text and you want to see if that text has some phone number right so phone number can be any 10 digit number there's no way without regular expression there you will have difficulty finding pattern matching to match to phone number or social security number or email address all that things so this regular expression is how you match some text to some known pattern and find if there's a email address there in the text or phone number in the text. Algorithm complexities, how your your algorithm may be or may not be complicated than it should be, how to make your algorithm less complicated, things like that. There's something called generator and we briefly talked about a recursive function so there you could do more exercise on recursive function though some of those recursive functions are very useful in some of the algorithms. So there are things that uh, simple algorithms cannot do or when we do we're using simple algorithms it will be more complicated than when we, we use recursive functions. You could do definitely do more exercise on object-oriented programming or learn more about object-oriented programming in depth. We only went over the surface materials. Then you could do plotting and other modules that you would like. So what modules? Let's talk about those. You saw this. This slide has been shared with you uh, multiple times earlier. We just did the core Python, which I would say we are in the middle, right? So after today, you get certified for the core concepts in Python. After this, you could, depending on your interest, you could go to one of these areas or multiple areas if you want to. So based on where you want to go, you would have to learn specific module to get there. And the modules are here. So for web development, there are some set of modules that you would need to master. App and game developments, you would need tkinter or pygame probably for web scrapping there is beautiful soup request request html there's automation and software testing selenium is a big one for math and science computing there is numpy and scipy that is the most common one for data visualization pandas matplotlib seaborn and for machine learning and ai stuff that you would you would have to learn skitlearn TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, OpenCV for image and natural processing, NLKT, which stands for Natural Language Toolkit, all these modules. So for everything that you go in more advanced level from here, you would have to pick one of these modules and learn about the, those to get your stuff done easier, easier right? I posted some of these, uh, every of the, each of these in under only one area, but they could also be used in multiple areas, like NumPy could be used in data analysis. Data analysis. Similarly, um, Selenium can be used for web scrapping as well. And these modules can also be combined together to make something even bigger. 
are better. Okay, so I need your honest feedback before we go. Uh, what aspects, aspects did you like about this course the most? Unmute yourself and free, feel free to give your opinions. What about the course did you like, not like or what could be improved? And would you recommend this course to your friends or families trying to learn beginners level Python? Not only this course, but every other course that I offer. How were the projects helpful? Did you understand more about functions or programming in general with um, the work that were assigned to you in the projects? And then any comments about my teaching method that I adopted or course material that were supplied to you or the tools that I use like Colab instead of other IDs? Any comments, any feedback would be helpful in making this better. Okay, uh, I can speak. Sure. Uh, so the the first thing about this course uh, is that I got motiv motivated. That's the first thing. Okay. And uh, yeah, once I started taking the course, I was uh, I really liked it. I really liked it, and I am thinking of having more courses, doing more. Uh, more readings and more listening in YouTube, and I will. I am thinking of continuing those this course to a, a little advanced course. Okay. And I try to do the visualization. I do a lot of database work. Yes. At my workplace, so uh, probably if I can do that, I think that would help me a lot. That's what I'm thinking. So. Thank you for calling me in for the course and that, that motivated to take this course, so let sure. me put it simply. Okay, so are you guys open, like any course that I'm offering next? I don't know the dates, right? Uh, some of the dates are provided in this uh, in these charts uh, and they, those goes back to like all the way back to October, November, December, whatever they are. You see here, one this, this data analysis that's from January next year. So whenever they open or whenever I decide to um, put this together, I, I might ping you guys and if you're interested, you can just jump in. But that the price you see on this slide are the prices that I would ask. I think that would be that would be good. But what, first of all, what I would like to do about Python is that I like to learn whatever is taught so far and make a really basic base uh, strong Yes. And until I do this, and that there is no point in taking the next course. Yes, I so, understand. And these, this slide here will will um, guide you on what else or where you can do that yeah. or what concepts you would need to gather before moving on. Right. Or okay. taking on actual high le higher level courses. Yeah. So, Nabal, so when are you planning for cybersecurity classes? Anytime soon? Oh, uh, what is it? J July, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe October I can do one. And if I do, this will be like 10 sessions for $200. Yeah, I would be interested in that too. Cybersecurity, okay. Yeah, right. I would be interested in that too. All right. There are there are like three, four courses I would be interested in, but let me let me work on on you know on the current uh, base. Yes. Uh, and then I can I can I can only uh, tell you what what to do next. So. Yeah, I know you said web programming and JavaScript last time, and then maybe cybersecurity, right? And what was the third one? It, it's uh, the the database visualization. We did that uh, with with Python. It was similar. Right, so. This so one. Right, they're right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that would cover a lot of all these little ones. Right. Okay.